Today we're going to learn how to quickly change bits on a rotary tool. The first thing I do is I put on some safety glasses and some hearing protection. And I also wear gloves when I work with these tools. So there, these are nice leather gloves. This is a rotary tool and, <coughs> and I've coiled the tool and I've wrapped up the cord with electrical tape and the electrical tape ha end has been folded a little bit. The reason you do this is that you can store your tool without having a big tangled mess of, of cord. Now I do a, a simple knot like this and this stops the plug from being pulled out. What I'm going to use to quickly change the bits on the rotary tool is pliers. And I have lots of bits that I'm going to switch. Usually when I'm working I use more than one bit or I have to change bits because they get used up. So this is a constant thing that you have to do with a rotary tool. I just undo the nut a little bit and then I hand tighten it and there's a little bit of a snap that makes sure that uh, your nut is, is locked into place and then you gently tighten the nut on the rotary tool using the pliers. The company gives a little wrench which, which you can also use for this purpose but I like the pliers and I'm really careful with them not to tighten the nut too hard but I find they work better because they easily grip the nut on the rotary tool and it allows you to really really quickly change bits. So when I'm changing the bits I first disconnect the cord this means that the machine cannot accidentally be turned on and if there's no power the machine can't be turned on. And then I take take the pliers quickly undo the nut and stick a new bit in and tighten it. And then I reconnect the power cords and I'm just about ready to go. And I put the gloves back on and now I can do some sanding with my little sanding drum. My homemade sanding drum. Some it's sometimes possible to make some of your own consumables and they're usually not as good as the ones that you can buy but they're cheaper often so if you use a lot of them it sometimes it's worth it now I'm going to use it pliers again and quickly take the bit out and I'm going to switch up another bit I'm when I'm working, I'm constantly switching bits, so it, it's nice to be really good at switching them. So again, loosen it up, put the drill bit in, it snaps into place, and now it's locked. You're pressing the button to lock, and then you use the pliers to gently tighten. And then you can reconnect the power cord, and... That's good. The reason you disconnect the power cord is if you accidentally leave the tool on, uh, then you, you don't get injured because the by by disconnecting the power cord, the tool is turned off. You can see that these tools spin at over 30,000 RPM, so you can put holes into wood very very quickly. That's the nice thing about a uh, rotary tool is, is you're using the speed and not, not muscle power to do the work. Each little rotation is removing some material. So if you have 30,000 rotations in a minute, it's going gonna, it's gonna to remove a considerable amount of material. And the, the rotary tools can cut, grind, and shape most things. They're small, but they can do it. They can cut through lots and lots of stuff. Now I'm going to switch up the drill bit and I'm going to put a felt polishing pad on top 
and I it snaps into place. The nut sl snaps into place, and then I use the pliers to quickly tighten. Now I reconnect the power source, and I'm ready to work again. Put on the safety gloves, and I can use this bit. This is really handy. This video is not really about how to hold the tool. I'm, it's more about how to change the bit fast. Or the bits as quickly as you possibly can. Because bits get worn out and then you have to replace them. And sometimes you want to want another bit in. So you're basically when you're working, you're, you're constantly changing the bits. So it's very helpful and it increases efficiency if you can change them fast. I like the fire system. See, I can, and I just throw the bits I don't need onto the top of my container, and then I'm, I can get at them really quickly. So I, I don't lose them, and I don't have to f um, find them in, in those little slots in, inside the box. Now I put the leather safety gloves back on, and I can do some sanding. You wouldn't normally hold the rotary tool like this, but just because I'm filming, I'm doing it. So, there you, there you go. And now I disconnect again, so you're starting to learn the process. And I have pliers there. And I... The nut is locked because I'm holding the button down and then I switch up the bit once I've loosened the nut and I stick in the drill bit again and it snaps into place and then I do a quick tighten a quick twist with the pliers and the drill bit is tight now I reconnect the cords and put on the gloves again and I'm ready to work. I can adjust the speed however I want it and now I can put some more holes in the wood. So when, you, when you're doing a project you, you might use a, a couple of bits and, you, and depending on where you are in the project you might have to switch up the bits quite frequently. It's, it's nice to be able to do this really fast. Now I'm going to do the process over again, disconnect the, the power cord, undo the nut using the pliers, and I'm going to coil up my cord and wrap it up with electrical tape. You want just, just one one wrap of electrical cold tape, one or two wraps. You don't want to use a lot because you want to be able to get it off, uh, remove the elect electrical tape qu uh, quickly. You don't need too much. So I'm just using one wrap and then you can see then I just fold the electrical tape down and I so I can remove the electrical tape really quickly. And then if you have a, a box full of tools, the uh, cords are all nice and neat and they, they're not all tangled up. Here are the various bits I have. You can see I, I have a lot of them and you tend to use up a lot with the rotary tool because it's spinning so fast that they often don't last very long. Some of the consumable ones, the metal ones might last longer. And it's, it's nice, this is really a fishing box, but it works really good for, um, for rotary tool bits. See, you can you can use the regular technique. You can use this this little wrench, but it doesn't have a lot of torque to it, and it's I find it's more cumbersome than using the pliers. If if you use them gently, you don't want to put too much torque on them uh, because they they can put a lot of torque onto the uh, nuts. But you, you just just use it carefully and gently, and it, for me it seems to work quite well. Snap it into place, and then you can can use the little wrench like that and it, it works fine or you can use the pliers. So 
See, the little wrench can also loosen it up quite quickly. And it usually has a screwdriver in the end. Now we'll see how this does with pliers. See, one quick twist and it's it's tight, beautifully tight. And you, of course, have to lock the nut into place before you tighten it. So it usually there's a snapping sound. You can also loosen the nut very quickly as well. Then you can you can adjust the how deep the shaft is is in the nut. So you can make quick and easy adjustments with the pliers. It goes really really fast. So I I stick the bit in the abrasive polishing buff, and I just quickly snap it into place with the locking button, and then one quick tighten. It just takes a second. Now it's beautifully tightened. And I can of course loosen the nut just as easily, and then I just throw the bit down where I'm working. And as long as it doesn't interfere with my workflow, it's fine. Then all the bits are in front of me. You can also throw them onto the lid of your plastic container. Now I'm using a sanding drum and I'm sanding some wood. I find the sanding drums are very handy. You don't want to use them at too high RPM because they tend to, uh, the sandpaper tends to kind of melt a little bit or the, or the uh, wood tends to get um, gummed up on the sandpaper so there um, you, you, you can read the manufacturer's speed recommendations these tools have different operating speeds for the different bits so you, you, you need to know what what the bit can and can't do so, so some of the bits can be used at really high speeds like like the drill the drill can be almost with wood the drill can be almost completely dull and and just the because it's going at 30,000 rpm it'll, it'll just basically burn through the wood it'll you'll see smoke but it, you can take a totally dull bit and it'll just burn a hole through the wood but the, the key with a rotary tool is not to force not to push hard unlike with a regular drill where you push real hard the rotary tool you, you let the speed of the tool do the work for you you be very gentle with it so you're not forcing the you're not pushing hard with the tool. You're just being patiently waiting for the RPMs to remove the material. Now I'm going to switch back to the abrasive polishing buff, snap it into place, lock with the button and a quick tighten using the pliers. It's really simple once you know how to do it and then reconnect. This is a safety feature. Just make sure that your tool doesn't have power when you're switching bits. You can adjust the speed too. If you if you're using a tool and, and, and you see that your speed is, is too fast, you can slow it down, or if it's not going fast enough, you can speed it up. You kind of experiment a little bit and you can see what works and what doesn't. Basically, you have to practice with these tools. You have to use them a lot and you'll figure out what they can do and what they can't do. And I just make sure that you have proper safety gear when you're using them because it's they're spinning real fast. This is another technique you can use to hold the bits. Their bits are sometimes a little hard to um, hold when you're when you're switching, say, a disc. In this case, it, it's a diamond uh, grinding disc, and I'm using the pliers to hold the disc, and I'm just using the screwdriver to tighten the disc in place. Uh, this is the screw on top of the mandrel. So you can also use the rotary tool to hold the um, to hold the mandrel in place and then and then uh, unplug it and then, and then lock it and tighten it. But uh, sometimes easier to use the pliers. You can see here I'm how quick it is to loosen the electrical tape on the cord and then you can be working in almost no time. See, I I didn't make the connection now. quickly put the diamond grinding disc in and I tighten it up. Now I power it and I put the tool somewhere that even if it, it starts spinning and I accidentally forgot to turn the switch on, 
it's not going to cause any damage. So you, you think ahead, it becomes a habit, and then you um, you can save yourself some problems that way. So you, you want to practice really good habits, safe habits, and then if something goes wrong, you're usually covered. So th see here, I'm using the, the diamond grinding disc, and it's spinning real fast, I'm not forcing it at all, and I'm just letting the high speed, I'm probably just about, I'm going fast here, and it is just removing material, and you can see the dust, it just, as it spins, it, it removes material, and you'll get the cut made, no problem. See here, I'm using a wire brush, and I am removing rust from a hook. See, and I, I can adjust the speed. Now I disconnect and I use the pliers, lock, lock the nut in place, undo the nut, throw the bit down, and stick another bit in. It's real easy to do this. Quick. Now it's in, in place, locked. There's usually a snapping sound, and then use the pliers to tighten and then reconnect the power source and put the gloves on and I'm ready to work. This bit will also remove material from a stone so you have to know what the bits are made for and what they can do and, and what they can't do. You can, you can read up about the bits and then you basically practice with them. You use them on, on the materials that they're supposed to be used on and you'll get experience and you'll learn what it can do and what it can't do. And you'll learn how to use your hands and you'll get really good at it. Now I'm gonna switch the bit up and put another one in, something else. This is an, uh, an, I think it's an aluminum oxide bit. And this is usually used to grind metal. So you can see these bits all, all do something else. Some grind stone, some grind metal, some grind wood. Now there's a nail here and I'm gonna just use the, um, this, this little grinding stone in an atypical way. You'd normally use a cutoff wheel here, but I'm just going to use the stone and cut through the nail. You can see it's spinning fast. The nail gets glowing hot, and there's sparks are coming off of the nail. So you, you can see that the nail, you can see how hot the metal gets, right? Because it's because the bit is spinning so fast. Not, and I'm just patient and I cut through the nail and I managed to cut a nail with a stone which is not something you usually do but it does work. So here's here's how I organize my box. I have uh, one of, of the containers where uh, or, the, or the little divisions where I, uh, I have my most used um, bits and then you, you put like like to like so you put similar stuff together and then you, you kind of look at it and after a while you know where your hundred bits are this is kind of like a fishing box it's the same technique and then you always put the bits back in the same little box and then you know where they are so and and you know uh, there's some that get consumed quickly like like the sanding discs or, or the sanding bands and some of them like like the drills you can use them for a long time so this is uh, this wrench, um, this system seems to work real well because you can switch the bits up real fast. You can just use the wrench and it goes real fast. So you, you can sometimes buy cheap bits on Amazon and you if you do lots of work with these bits, you're gonna use them up. So you, you, you've noticed, you can notice that I throw the bits that I use a lot when I'm working I throw them on the upside down lid because then I can get at them real quickly and they're nice and organized um, it's I call it the the on deck section for the bits you can also use a little box clear plastic works well because you can see what's inside that's it's nice and if and if you want, you can put some electrical tape around the box and that just stops it from opening accidentally. It's annoying if the stuff falls down and it's disorganized. So you can use the lid as 
the opened lid as a section for the bits that you're going to use frequently. You're going to be switching them up a lot. See, when, if I flip the box upside down, I can see what's inside. There's my bit, and I put it into the on, on deck section. And now I can clean it up too. I can clean the bits up and put them in the right section. And you, you, you can periodically go through your box and just check and remove any, any old bits or bits that are really worn down and have no more value to them. And you can sort of curate it and just manage it and make sure that everything is in order and you have enough bits for your next project. Thanks for watching and have a great day.